Greetings, orchestra students in fourth and fifth grade. This is the Creative Composition Concern video. I'm going to show you how to complete this assignment uh, from top to bottom. So let's start off um, at the top. It says fourth grade on this one, but if it's fifth grade, it's, it's a very similar sheet. Uh, first step, practice writing your clef. Now clef is this right here. If you're a violin player, your clef starts like this, a straight line, then a small loop, then a big circle, and that's your clef. Your time signature is the number 4-4. Four, four. That's just writing the number 4 and then 4. All right. If you're a viola player, that's two lines, and then make a 3. That's your viola clef symbol. Cello players, it's kind of like drawing a question mark. Two dots there, like that. The next step is to write quarter notes. Now quarter notes have a note head and a straight stem. The note head can be written on a line, the stem goes straight down. Now you may be wondering which direction your stem should go. Well, there happens to be a rule about that. It's called the middle line rule. Any note written on the middle line or above, the stem goes down direction. If the note is below the middle line in any way, the stem goes up. You can even write notes below the staff with ledger lines. Now technically I'm not supposed to be able to fit five notes in a measure, but here when you're practicing you can write as many as you want. The next thing I ask students to do is practice writing their quarter rests. Now here's how I draw one, but a student taught me this cool little secret. It's called the zebra cat. You start with Z and then write a C. And that's a pretty good looking quarter rest. There's my version and here's one of my students versions. Z, C. Now for fourth graders I asked you to write your D string notes. And of course for each instrument these are different. So here I'll write the first ones for violin. The notes of our D string are D, E, F sharp, G, and A. I remember to write a sharp for my F sharp. If you'd like to, you can label them too. If you really want to get involved, you could write down your fingerings as well. That's for violin. If I was a viola player, it'd be exactly the same, except your clef looks di different and your D string notes are written in a little different place on the staff. If you're a cello player, your D string notes are right here. And since cello players don't play or don't have extra fingers like the violin players seem to have, our notes are these notes here, these four notes. And if you're a bass player, you know that you only have three notes on the D string, D, E, and F sharp. But I'm letting cello players and bass players go ahead and add the A if you'd like to play that note in your composition too. Now all of that practice is so that we can start our first composition here. Now you'll see that there's a quarter note in the second measure and a quarter note in the last measure, the fourth measure. Why are those there? Those are guide notes. You're not allowed to change those. The fourth note of this measure will be A and the fourth note of this measure will be D. So where to start? Well. We have these notes to choose from if we're a violin player, these notes to choose from if we're a viola player, and these notes to choose from if we're a cello or bass player. So just pick one. Which one should we start with? D, E, F sharp, G, or A? I'm gonna start with F sharp. And I'm gonna write this in violin music, but you just write it your way for viola music or cello music or bass music. Now, music can do three things. It can stay the same, it can go up, or it can go down. Let's go up. 
I'm going to write the next note G, the next note A, and part of my rule says that I must use quarter notes, but I can also use a maximum of five quarter rests. So I'm going to make some space here and create a rest. So I have this music, so I'll check it out on my instrument. Rest. That's the beginning of my composition. F sharp, G, A, rest. Now what should I do? I can stay the same. I can go down, because I've gotten to the top of the notes I can use, or I can stay the same. So what should I do? Hmm. Da, da, de, 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 de. I'm, I'm going to go down. That's what I'm going to do. De, de, de. I think in the next measure, I'm going to find D. D. Now let's play through my composition, see if I like it. Like what happened here. I'm going to change that. I'm going to put a rest there instead. I think there needs to be some space there. Let's try that. Now I may go back and change some of these notes later, play it again and again, sleep on it, have someone else play it, and that is the process for composition. Remember, there's no wrong notes, but make sure to play through your composition and make sure it's exactly the way you like it. There might be a space where you'd rather have a rest or, or maybe another note. Now as we continue through this piece, notice I have some instructions for level two. Level one had guide notes, ending guides, but there's no ending guides in this one, so you're completely free to write whatever music you want in these four measures here. And then the rest of the assignment, I give a much longer level 2B, which still has ending guides, but as you can see, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 measures long. And then the very top level 3 composition is to write 8 measures with no guide notes. Now, all I am looking for from most students is to try out level one and level two. Think of these as extra credit. Not everybody's going to want to do this much composing so far. Good luck, and I hope you find your inner composer. Everyone has the gift of, and talent to make their own music and write it down so others can see it too. Good luck.